In this video, I tried to carve a table out of a 350 pound block of wood. This turned out to be my most physically and mentally demanding project yet. The real question I need to answer though is, was it worth it? I would be lying if I called this a complete scrap wood table, but over the past year I've been collecting lumber for this specific project. I knew I was going to have to use a ton of lumber to get to the design I wanted, and the design inspiration for this table actually came from a cutting board. I've seen a bunch of these chaotic looking cutting boards that have multiple species of wood that create this really cool pattern. So I thought, let's do that same thing, just scale it up a hundred times and make a table out of it. I'm using six different species of wood and essentially each board will be glued into one ginormous table blank. While I do like the chaotic nature of those cutting board patterns, I want my design to be a little more controlled I guess is the right way to describe it. I always liked the ombre effect which is when a darker color fades into a lighter color. So that's what I'm going to be going for for this table design. What I'm doing now is organizing the wood into a bunch of panels. I'm making sure to keep the walnut, which is the darker wood, in the center of each panel that I make and have it fade into the lighter colored woods. Something that doesn't get talked about enough in this woodworking world is the skill of visualizing your piece before it's constructed. Being able to look at rough, ugly lumber and trust yourself that you can turn it into something eye-catching is definitely a skill in itself. During this project, I had to flex that skill the best that I could. I had to trust that future me won't look back at present me and think, dude, what were you thinking? This is even harder to do when you know you will be forced to learn new techniques and skills during that project. I think you know when you have a cool project though, when someone asks you what you're working on at the moment and you have no clue how to even explain it to them. Like, yeah, I'm building this round table that I'm gonna hand carve the center out of Oh, and it's gonna be have like a bunch of different colors. It'll, it'll be cool, just, just trust me. I think anyone who's ever built a unique project has to know that feeling. But I also think that means you're doing something right. So this was my life for the next few days, gluing and clamping and waiting for the glue to dry. The glue bottle that I was using was not working nearly fast enough. So I threw that to the side and just filled up a measuring cup with some glue instead. This helped me spread the glue much faster and it was actually a pretty good idea. Now I have to cover every square inch as well or there's a chance that there will be gaps in the final product and gaps just aren't cool. Since my planner is only 12 inches wide and each panel needs to be 20 inches wide in total, I had to glue each panel into two sections plane them down and then glue each half together for the final panel. This wasn't a huge issue, it just took some extra time. So I have one of these blocks here glued up. This thing is so heavy. So I got the scale here and I'm curious to see how heavy it actually is. It's heavy. Okay. Well. 33.3 pounds exactly. At this point, I had enough wood to make 10 and a half total panels, which if you do the math, when it's all glued together, it should weigh around 350 pounds in total, which is pretty much insanity. And at this point, I was really trying to figure out how I was going to be able to move this thing around once it was all glued up, since I'm one of those guys that really never asks for help unless it is completely and utterly absolutely necessary. So I just spent like the past probably combined 10 hours planing and table sawing and gluing all of these blocks of wood together. And right now all I have to show is a bunch of blocks of wood. I still have to spend like probably the next 10 hours doing the exact same thing so I can get more of a randomized pattern. So that's exciting. This is why I love woodworking. Doing repeated tasks for 10 to 20 hours straight. Now that is epic. Once I got over myself, I got back to work and continued gluing my panels. Now to make it a little more clear, this is going to be my second round of glue ups. I'm planning to do three rounds in total. Each time I cut the panel up on the table saw, it creates a smaller and smaller block of each species of wood, as well as making the pattern a little more random. But I do think there is a balance between bigger chunks of wood and the randomness and 
I think three rounds of total glue ups and cuts is the right amount based on the fact that I am not going to do it a fourth time. <laughs> Eventually, I did get my last group of chunks and ended up organizing them into three different piles according to the overall color of each chunk. There's a light, medium, and dark colored pile for each. For the final panel that will be glued into the main blank for the table, it will have two chunks of dark, two chunks of medium, and two chunks of light. That's a lot of chunks, but <laughs> this will make sure that each panel has an even amount of that ombre effect that I'm after. I hope this makes sense, but if not, it will here shortly, so just keep watching. After that though, I can trim up each panel, and while I was doing that, I couldn't help but think how many cutting boards I could have made from all this wood that I'm using. But cutting boards are kind of boring, and sometimes you have to pay a little price to build something that's one of a kind. Speaking of paying a price, you may be wondering how much I paid for all of this lumber. So to give a little bit of reference, I'm using about 80 to 90 board foot of lumber for this project. Considering there are a bunch of species of wood, let's just say like the national average price of lumber per board foot is around $7. That would put the price of this lumber around $600 to $700. So just take that amount and like just divide it in half and then maybe divide it in half one more time and that's actually how much I paid. I'm not bragging, but all that I have to say is sometimes it pays to know a guy who knows a guy. Oh. Holy, that's heavy. So my original plan was to just glue these two halves together just as they are like this. But as you can see, I have this oval mark out here that I wanna cut out for like the middle of the table. My brain got to working for once. And I figured it would be a lot easier to carve these sections out while they're still in halves. Cause I can cut from this side in with a chainsaw instead of having to take like a drill bit and carve all of this out. So I'm excited to carve this out. Kind of nervous, but I'm also excited because I don't really know what I'm doing. So it'll be fun to try something new, I guess. So I guess let's get to carving. So I went ahead and bought this electric chainsaw to see what all the hype was about. And also partly because I don't trust myself with a gas powered one. And I'm not trying to cut my arm off while I'm building this table. Cause like, imagine someone asking what happened to my arm. And I have to say, oh yeah, I just cut it off with a chainsaw on accident. <laughs> I'm not trying to have to do that. Anyways, my original idea was to try to save as much of that center section as possible. I wanted to use it to make like a cutting board or even like turn a bowl out of that blank because I figured there'd be enough material there for me to be able to do that. As I was carving though, I realized how hard it would be to actually save like a sizable chunk in order to get a blank out of it. So sadly, I had to cut up the chunk into a bunch of small sections. One thing that I was a bit ashamed to admit on this project is how much wasted material I had. I really didn't expect to waste this much, but obviously on a more sculptural project, there's going to be an access of material that you're gonna have to remove. But like I said, this whole center section ended up pretty much going to waste, which definitely bumped me out. So if that makes you mad too, make sure to leave a nice hate comment so I feel even better about myself. Once I have a good amount of that center carved out, I can attempt to try to glue these two halves together. I knew this was going to be a struggle, not just because of how heavy the two chunks are, but just being able to get enough clamping pressure throughout the entire piece and making sure there are no gaps is going to be a struggle too. Luckily, since I cut out that center section already, there's a lot less surface area that actually needs to be bonded together. So in theory, I should be able to get a much tighter and better bond. I probably threw about every long clamp I had at this to get it as tight and as much pressure as humanly possible. Once that glue is dry, I put a fresh battery in my manly battery powered chainsaw and I started to carve that outside area. Now for some reason, I've been drawn to implementing ovals or as many people corrected me on a previous video, an ellipse <laughs> into my projects. 
Obviously, this one is no exception as I'm carving that rough shape out right now. Now, I'm not going to lie. I was really excited to start carving this thing with the chainsaw, but it honestly wasn't nearly as fun as I was expecting it to be. I didn't feel nearly as manly without that super loud gas engine running and the silent electric motor just didn't do it for me. So I got two corners and about seven eighths of the third corner and we're out of battery. So when I bought this thing, it was marketed for 315 cuts and I don't know, it doesn't seem like 315 cuts, but we're gonna charge battery up for another hour and this is gonna take a while probably. Of course it's gonna take a while. It always takes longer than you think. Oh well, just how it is. Once I'm happy with the rough shape, I can start power carving. And I got this disc that says extreme on the packaging. And I just assumed that means it's extremely likely it will hurt a lot if you let it touch your skin. So I took that into consideration before I started using it. Anyways, I knew I had a lot of carving ahead of me, so I just got to work. I wanted to start by removing a good amount of material and really just getting rid of all the chainsaw marks before I really honed in on the total shape of this table. I would say one of the biggest struggles I had during this project was just flipping this table over back and forth. It took way longer than it should have every time, but every time I carved at it, I guess it did get a little lighter, so that's one positive. At this point in the build though, I did really start to question if I could actually turn this thing into something that resembled a professional produced piece of furniture. The table was looking pretty rough and it was my job to find the diamond in it. I did some very rough sketches of the final shape that I was going towards so it could kind of reference it during the carving. As you can see, it looks absolutely nothing like that sketch yet, so there was still definitely a lot of work to be done. Now in the process of carving this table, I think this has to be the messiest my shop has ever been. Not only was every single square inch covered in a nice thick layer of sawdust, but there were just random tools laying everywhere because I threw pretty much everything at this table. I was kinda at the point to where there's no point in cleaning everything up until it's done because it's just going to get messy again. But I'm also that same guy who just works much better in a nice clean organized shop. I think this shot here summarizes this carving process the best. There were so many moments where you just kinda have to step back, take a good hard look at it from a bunch of different angles, see what needs fixed and carve that spot down. All right, so I've been carving at this thing for like three days now, and it's finally starting to take shape. It's crazy because it's currently January 26th, which is supposed to be like one of the coldest days of the year, and it's like 65 degrees in Pennsylvania. I have my garage door up to get some ventilation, so I swear everything in the shop is covered with like an inch of dust, but so far so good. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting this oval shape to be like a uniform shape. And I got a little chainsaw happy when I was cutting with the chainsaw and I kind of cut into this one side here. So I kind of got to carve that out and get that to the right shape. But other than that, I mean, I still have a lot of work to do and I don't even want to think about how much sanding I'm going to have to do after this. So I'm just going to keep carving, I guess. And keep carving is exactly what I did. So I think a way to make a piece of furniture stand out from the crowd is not only just how it looks, but also how it feels. When I used to make cutting boards, I always noticed people would come up and love to run their finger through the juice groove just because of the way it feels on their finger. I definitely took that into consideration when carving this table. When someone goes up to this table to feel the curves, I want it to perfectly fit in the cup of their hand, so it gives the observer a whole new experience. I really took the time to fill this table up and make sure it will feel as good as it looks. Once I'm happy with the rough shape, I can go ahead and get the shop cleaned up finally. There was enough sawdust to fill up almost an entire wheelbarrow load. And like I said earlier, I do definitely feel a bit of guilt knowing that all this sawdust and wood is going to waste. But there's really no more time to feel guilty because I have to get ready and prepare myself for the next couple days because the most exciting part of this build is going to be coming up next.
Once I got tired of sanding, I decided to give myself a little break and figure out how I wanted to get the top of this flat. Now I whipped up this makeshift kind of flattening jig that I can use my router to get the top and bottom perfectly flat. Now this is something that I really had to think about for a few days beforehand how I wanted to do this, but I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty proud of the solution that I came up with. I just used a few 2x4s and 2x6s that I ripped down to make sure that they were perfectly straight and level, then just screwed them together to make this cage around the table. I got this 2 inch flattening bit for my router that I'll use and I'll lower the speed a little bit on my router just to be a little more safer since it is a larger size bit. Then I could just take my time going back and forth with the router. Now it probably took about four or five total passes to get the top flat and I was actually amazed with how well it worked. Once I about broke my back flipping it over, I got to work on the bottom and this was pretty much the same process at the top. Remember a little while back when I was clamping the two halves of this table together and I said how important it was to get even clamping pressure? Well, I obviously didn't really take that into account because once I planed both sides down, I was left with a few ugly gaps on the top. Luckily though, I was actually somewhat prepared for this and I saved all the cutoffs from each panel that I made. Then I could go through and sort each one out until I found the matching cutoff that butted up against that gap. Now if I just took some glue and sawdust and shoved it down in the gap, there would be a very noticeable seam in the top and that would pretty much ruin the whole table. So my idea here was to use a makeshift straight edge and route out a very small and shallow groove with an 8 inch straight bit. Then cut a matching plug on the table saw to try to fill that back in. I was really hoping this worked because I literally had no backup plan at all. Also I had to be careful right there not to lose the little strips like I did but luckily though once I finished the cut I could just take the throat plate out and dig up that little strip that fell down in there and we were pretty much good to go. Then just like any normal inlay I just used some wood glue and shoved the strips down into the channel making sure that each species matched up perfectly to the one next to it in the table. Little things like these are pretty much impossible to account for while you're planning out a project. That's why it's always important to try to budget more time than you think a project's going to take. I honestly don't know if I've ever finished a project and was like, wow, that took way less time than I thought to build. Anyways, once the glue was dry, it was the moment of truth and I could carefully go ahead and sand and plane down the rest of the strip. And I'm not even going to point out where it is in the table, but once I have it fully sanded up, if you can't even see it, that means I must have done at least a pretty decent job. So in the intro of this video, I mentioned this was the most physically and mentally draining projects I've ever done. Here is the mentally draining part. I spent hours, and when I say hours, I mean several days just sanding this table. Getting each and every last scratch out of this table, as well as making sure it was smooth and flowed well, took me an impossibly long amount of time. Waking up in the morning and knowing all that I was going to be doing that day was sanding was honestly not too exciting. But a good quote that I like to say in the back of my head is, this too shall pass. And it eventually did, and I got the table perfectly sanded up to 220 grit. I took some mineral spirits and wiped the entire table down just to clean the surface before finishing. If you look closely, the mineral spirits really yellow that lighter colored wood since it is an oil. And I really wanted to avoid that yellowing as much as possible in the finish. So I decided to use a water-based polyurethane finish. Since water-based finishes are typically much more clear than oil-based finish, this should be my best bet at preventing that ambering or kind of yellowing in those lighter woods. Anyways, at this point, before I show you the final product, 
I am going to have to ask you to subscribe to my channel to just help boost my ego a little bit. So if you can go ahead and do it, that would be awesome. Anyways, I put about six or seven coats of this finish on and luckily for me, this finish dries and can be recoated in about 15 or 20 minutes. So that really helped kind of speed up the process. But anyways, this project was an amazing challenge and I learned how hard it is to do sculptural furniture. If you are interested in owning this table, there is some good news. I am listing it for sale with a link down below in the description. So go ahead down there and check that out if you're interested. I'm curious to know what you all think of this project. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you wish I would have done something differently? I know I don't have to ask for people's opinions, but I would definitely love to hear it. Anyways, I appreciate you all for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.